Welcome back. So before we get started, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to uh, Justin G over there in Brisbane, Australia for setting up the GoFundMe account. Um, this has just uh, been amazing the last day or so with uh, all the support that's coming from there. So um, I want to thank Justin again and, and uh, definitely want to thank everybody who's already uh, contributed to that. Uh, you guys are amazing. It's just going to make it much easier for me to you know, have the funding available now uh, to bring those guys, uh, Justin and Elliot, back out again. And then, uh, you know, the funds and stuff I need to, you know, get the flight program done and uh, go out and execute on the plan that I've been working on for uh, taking the aircraft into production. So um, a massive thanks again to any, anyone who's contributed. And if you guys are thinking of doing that, you know, um, it's just amazing. And uh, thank thanks in advance to anyone who steps up for that. And I'll put a link above here. And also link in the um, in the description of the video. So if you want to check that out, you uh, can. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so uh, moving on to progress. So um, I texted with uh, Justin earlier, um, you know, a couple of days ago now, just to ask him about what my options were with the, the um, con uh, those control cable guards that need to be secured, and I asked him if it was okay if I could just uh, safety wire those in place. So basically sort of wrap some safety wire around the sort of loop end like that, and then pull it in, in either two directions or one direction, depending as long as it doesn't rotate around the pulley anymore. So uh, I'm gonna be uh, trying that on the, on the 10 different pulleys there to see if I can get that sorted out. Cause that'll be much easier than trying to create some brackets and, and you know, rivet them or anchor them into place or whatever. And especially for the ones up in the nose there, um, in, in the keel, um, potentially just put, being able to put some safety wire in there, I can pull those uh, safety wires back a little bit for, further forward and anchor them somewhere further forward where I can reach. And that may um, you know, prevent me from having to pull the nose gear out completely just to get to all that, because I can pretty, pretty easily fish some, um, some safety wire up around those loops without too many problems. So uh, that's that, no, but that'll be later on. Um, I want to get you know keep working on this uh, side stick issue first. So uh, on the side sticks, just to give you an update of where I'm at. So I um, ordered some of those oil impregnated uh, bronze bushings because I wanted to try one of those on the side stick uh, just to see if it had the same binding up problem as what the iGlides had. And as you'll see here coming up, uh, basically the same type of thing. Um, I think it's just because you've got this slight little bit of movement in there and when you get it sort of jacked a little bit off like that, it tends to sort of catches on the edge and I don't think there's any way of really uh, preventing that from happening. So uh, what I'm gonna do is, or I've decided what I'm gonna do is pretty much go ahead and um, copy off similar to what Cirrus has done in their design and I'll be showing you that here in a minute. I think that's going to be the best solution because it's a known solution that works uh, with a you know, sliding side stick. And so, you know, if I use the principles that they've used, I uh, shouldn't have too many problems in there. And the trick is going to be sort of retrofitting in, that into what I already have, the bracketry that I already have, because uh, I don't want to go, you know, cutting and cutting out the carbon fiber brackets that I have. So I need to sort of work up to those. And I also have some constraints in there that you're going to see with respect to, you know, how much room I have around there to work with. Uh, but I've been making some pretty good progress so far, as you'll see uh, here shortly. And I'm just going to keep working on that. So hopefully within, um, let's say within a couple of days, I should have the design mostly worked out. And then I can start working on, uh, you know, ordering the parts and um, fabricating up the things that need to be made. So uh, that's kind of uh, how that's going. And I think it's going to be a much better solution than trying to hope that um, I can fix it with the bearings or, you know, with the slided bearings. And this should end up being a much, much smoother solution uh, in terms of how it operates. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, have a look at, um, at what I've been working on here. And also, I was, oh, you'll see I was out at the uh, hangar and uh, just taking some more video there. And I've got some dimensions and stuff just to check on everything compared to the CAD to make sure that um, I wasn't going to be surprised later on after I designed something and then figured out it wasn't going to fit. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so here's this side stick there with uh, that bronze um, oil impregnated bushing on there. And you can see it slides back and forwards super nice when it's not loaded up at all. And uh, it stops there when it hits those holes because there's a little burr on those that I didn't need to take off before. So uh, anyway, but if I just try and like lift this thing up just by holding that bushing, um, 
and then sort of slowly tilt it down so it could eventually sort of slide out from the bushing. You can see I can hold it at a pretty extreme angle to almost close to vertical and it doesn't slide out and it's not until it sort of really gets vertical that it actually slides so it's just basically grabbing on there and uh, you know at this point I just don't want to risk trying to do this um, you know with this system being that it's you know that's so close to what the eye glide was doing so uh, I'm just going to move on and I'll do it the other way all right so to review what I'm working with there's that bracket just all on its own there in the right hand side of the aircraft so that's what I've got to work up to and then there's the hole there that goes through um, or you could see the hole there that goes through on the right hand side to the outside where the stick goes through so I mainly got this video so I can just basically check everything because I can't be at the airport and then constantly be working on this on the CAD as well so uh, yeah that's what I'm working with uh, on this side and I took some extra dimensions there just to make sure everything matched up with what was in the CAD and then uh, you know I feel comfortable that whatever I design in there is going to actually work and fit in the real world and moving over onto the left hand side so uh, this is what that looks like and it's a bit hard because nothing's been pulled out there um, but the difference on this side is you can see that's the bottom of the AC unit there in the top of the frame and that's pretty close to that bracket so anything I can create or that I create can't really protrude, uh, protrude much past the sort of uh, profile of that bracket there at least not for the first couple of inches there where that you know the AC unit boxes you can see there's the edge of the bracket there is basically touches the AC unit um, so I have to work in that space and then looking back the other way hey who's that guy um, looking back the other way you can see I have plenty of room here around that bracket and underneath there's plenty of room if I need to sort of create any sort of structure that hangs below it uh, or hangs off sort of inboard there and should be okay so um, that's basically what I'm going to do start looking in the CAD and uh, working up to uh, making something work within that uh, within the room that I have there. Alright, let's take a look at how Cirrus uh, does it here. So uh, this is just one of their side sticks here. This is a, a left hand side stick, I believe it is, or yeah, I think it's a left hand side one. Uh, or actually, no, I think this is a right hand side one. Right hand side? Yeah, possibly. Anyway, what's uh, interesting about how they do it here is that they have a square tube instead of a round tube and then over here you see at both ends they have these two v groove bearings that basically engage the sharp sort of 90 degree uh, edge of that square tube and they also have these bolts in here where they can adjust the tightness on those um, bolts there so they sort of can clamp them up tight or against the uh, square tube that way they can make sure that there's no play in it. And the beauty about this system compared to what I had with that, uh, with the bearings and the slot is this, this system has no left and right play in it. There's no dead zone uh, because everything is sort of clamped really tight um, around the, um, around the uh, rectangle tube or the square tube. And the other thing I really like about the system too is that uh, there's no sort of anything sliding on anything. The square tube there is moving between bearings that are rolling back and forth. And then how they mount there is they have these rod ends here, one here and one down the other end. And I'm sorry if it's a bit blurry, I'll show you another picture in a second. Um, but those rod ends is where it rotates around. So it's a bit interesting. It doesn't actually rotate around the center of the square tube. It rotates sort of off center. But I guess um, the only thing that's a bit weird about that is that the opening that they have coming through the panel um, is sort of oversized to allow it to uh, you know be able to to go and um, you know rotate left and right without it sort of hitting anything. Um, anyway, it's the key points in that. It basically pivots for aileron control on those two uh, rod ends, and it slides in and out uh, on those four V groove bearings. So let's have a look at um, one of the other pictures there and see how it looks from the other angle. All right, looking from the other end, uh, from the other angle here, you can sort of get a, a different sort of uh, perspective of it. And uh, let's see if I can uh, zoom in here a little bit more, possibly, maybe not. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So if you have a look there, there you can see those sort of V groove rollers there, how they grab the, um, the rectangle tube there, or the square tube there, and then the other end there. So anyway, this is what I'm going to try and replicate. And now let's see um, how far I've gotten.
Okay, so here's where I'm at so far. Um, here's my starting point, basically. Yeah, I've done a lot more than this. I'm just going to sort of step you through it. So there's my bracket, and there's what I'm working up to. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to bear with me because this uh, Cam Studio program wants to jump around sometimes, uh, or cause SolidWorks to jump around, like just like that. So let me get oriented again. All right, so that's what we're starting with. And I'll just start sort of uh, unhiding bits and pieces as we go. So the first thing I'm going to do over in here where this uh, bracket is, I've got like a sort of a little bit of a recess and I need to fill that in. So I'm going to be creating just a bit of a, like quarter inch FR4 to fill that in. And that gives me a nice mounting point and that, that can be screwed and or bonded into place. Um, and then I'm going to have my square uh, stick there, which as you can see sort of um, just a rectangular, it's three quarter inch uh, diameter there. And then I need to um, have some bearings around either end of that to have this to rotate around, or at least the whole thing to rotate around. So I'm going to have uh, housing for that, which is just going to be FR4, as you can see there. And that, that'll, I'll be able to just make that out of FR4 and just do it on the lathe up at Britt's place. And then I'll be putting these bearings in that, and I've already sourced these. These are almost the same bearings that I used in the uh, on the redrive there for the oil uh, shuttle. So those those will be in there. And then there's an inner sleeve that uh, this will be uh, aluminum. So one on either side here, and just be making making that out of some stock um, and uh, on on the lathe. And then from then on out, we go with um, some brackets here. So um, I have these end brackets. I think that's the right one to show. Yeah, that's a bracket there, and that that'll be welded to the one that you just saw. And then there's a main a main bracket that sort of comes from there. And then there's a uh, extension bracket as well that goes there. And then we have a join to join those two together and I've still got to cut this out here and then there's a um, there's a little plate here that's gonna um, allow me to that one will be welded to this this other one here and then this one will be bolted so I can assemble it um, in place there so basically everything will sort of slide into to place uh, with the bearings and that and then these two will get bolted up and then I'll hold everything all right, so the next piece is that we need these little um, roller mounts here. So let's see what we got here. Roller mounts. And where's the other ones? That should be all of them there. Oh, they're spacers, sorry. Need these spacers. out of those guys like that one there so you could see I've got an extension there and there's the other ones are here that one there and then uh, next up is these wheels and I've actually sourced these as well already so I don't have to create these there are you know wheels on bearings and that's one of them there the other one under there and over here as you can see and then under there so they're basically riding on the on that edge of the uh of the square tube and then lastly there's just a couple of bolts in here that i have that are holding that bracket together there those guys in there so uh, that's how it looks there and hopefully i can show you without uh without it jumping around so much but this is how it's going to work. So if I go here to the uh, the move option here, and I grab the stick here, so you see here the stick slides in and out as you wish, you know. And so the end the end of that there will be connected to the elevator uh, torque tube, and then the whole assembly here, this thing. See if I can get it to rotate. Yeah, that rotates like that. So. 
And so the, those two bearings on the outside edge over here, those are carrying all that uh, rotation motion there. And so uh, everything is nice and smooth. So you can do basically both things, rotate it there and then slide this in and out and do, you know, both things at the same time. So I've still got, you know, more stuff to finish off here. I've got to create uh, brackets and stuff that tie the top of these guys together because that's not done. I have to put the hardware in there and everything like that. But that should work in terms of clearances. And this extension thing, I needed to create that there because sort of wrapping around this bracket here. And so that way we're supported, you know, pretty close to the end of the of the um, square tube here and pretty close to where the stick is there. So nice, uh, you know, I think it should be strong enough. And with these bearings and everything in there, that it should be rigid enough that we're not going to get any weird sort of movement going on. And I don't really even have to do any real work of uh, trimming anything on that bracket. Everything just retrofits in there. And obviously the end of the stick there will just be extended on to what I currently have on the current stick um, to, you know, put the actual, um, you know, the handle on there um, or the main stick that you grab onto on there. So anyway, that's what I got so far. Um, pretty much still got, you know, more work and cleanup to do, but I think this is actually going to work. And it'll be nice and smooth so and then of course oh, there'll be a bracket on here around about here somewhere that the aileron linkage uh, connects to as well so anyway that's what i got so far for this uh, video thanks again uh, for tuning in and uh, sticking with me through this long and a bit tedious video and um we'll see you guys on the next one